<laughs> All right, this is Wendy Fan. And this is John Kohler. <laughs> All right, do it again. All right. I don't know how do you start your videos off normally. Boring. All right. Hi, Hi. this is <laughs> Wendy Fan. <laughs> Hey you guys, how is it going? Welcome to John Kohler's garden. This is John Kohler, growingyourgreens.com. <laughs> Coming at you at John Kohler's garden. And we are going to make one of my favorite milkshakes. Cool, I'm looking forward to it, Winnie. What is it? It is a, well, in Vietnam, I grew up drinking the uh, Chico Sapote, uh -huh. but this is a mame. It's pretty darn close to yeah, that they're taste. Like, yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're similar. A little bit different. <laughs> yeah, but it's harder to find like the the sapotes here that are ripened correctly. Yeah. This seems to be better, so I think this is a good um, supplement. Alternative. Alternative, yep. Yeah, so in general, Chico's, are, you could get those here in town. You could get them actually at Market On. The one on Decatur has Chico's when they're in season, but then they're, if they're picked too early, they never ripen up properly. Whereas the mames are usually picked at usually a pretty good time, but sometimes you'll get them when they're not picked at a good time, and then they won't ripen up either. But at least there are less money than Chico Sapotes. Oh yeah, like <laughs> so much cheaper, depending on where you go. Yeah, usually about half the price, but depends, yeah. It really depends. Yeah, like if people don't know, they look at it, they were mis mistaken that this is like a sweet potato. Yeah, and the coolest thing, when I check out at the grocery store sometimes, <gasps> oh, no, they charge me for sweet potatoes, <laughs> I'm like, yes! <laughs> so how do you pick a good, like, how do you know when, when it's ripened? Because it's not like a regular, like a tropical fruit that puts out this really strong, like, fragrance. You can't really smell it. How would you pick a good, you know, one that you know is yeah. yeah, so basically, you want to only eat these when they're soft, like an avocado. Like, this gives a general pressure and consistently all the way around. So how many times have you guys picked out an avocado that just never really gets soft and never ripens up because it was picked too early? That actually happens a lot more with a mesa pote than with avocados. So the way you want to know if it was picked prematurely or not is to find out um, is you want to scratch it. So you want to go by the stem end and you want to use your fingernail and you want to scratch. This works better when it's uh, nice and firm, but if we scratch it, oh yeah, we can see, uh, this is not working too well because it's already getting soft. But if we scratch it, we really, when we scratch it anyways, we want to see like an orange color there. We don't want to see green. So I'm scratching, you can see a little, a tinge of green right there. But this is not scratching too well because it's too soft already. When it's harder, it'll like more flake off easily. So it's a little bit more difficult. But we really want to see some kind of like more orange color and that's probably the best way to know. Um, if you go find them at the store and they're already soft, I would be weary um, because sometimes when they're soft, they could be ripe. But the other thing is once they go ripe, if they've gone beyond ripe, they'll actually start molding from the inside out and then they'll actually go bad. So I prefer to buy them when they're hard and then ripen them up. And to ripen them up, what I do is I put them in a paper bag with uh, bananas and I put it in the warmest house of my room, or the warmest room of my house. <laughs> Maybe on top of your refrigerator might be a good place for some of you guys. And then I check it every couple days to make sure. And you wanna make sure it's consistently gives the general pressure. This one's pretty much ripened perfectly, especially around this tip, because sometimes the tip will be still pretty hard but everything else will be stopping you like i could eat it now and you could eat it now but when i've done that and it's not fully ripe all the way around some parts on the inside are hard and crunchy no. and like you know a banana if you eat a banana that's not ripe it's kind of more starchy like this is really starchy and not good if it's not ripe so you really want to wait until it's fully ripe and is it anything like the chica sapote when it's not fully ripe it has like that really astringent, astringent and that's white mm. sap just kind of oozes out does that happen with so there's mummy? no white sap in this guy like okay, the chica sapote <laughs> but it definitely doesn't taste good and might have a you know some astringency level i Mm. My goal is to never eat those unripe. <laughs> and so I, I haven't done that in so long, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, but that's just so important. I think especially with a lot of tropical fruits is that if they're not ripened correctly, you're gonna have a bad experience and not like to have fruit, right, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we know this one's ripened properly. I, right. It's, was that one? Seems the, so, it could be moldy inside, we'll see. Hopefully not. I did hopefully have the not. other one that started having a little bit of mold on the seed. Yeah, that's where the yeah. mold starts and then it starts to spread. So then usually if it's not bad, I'll scrape it all mm. out and then I'll still use it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's all good. So let's say, okay, so the paper bag, especially with that uh, 
the app, not Apple. Apple might work too, right? Apple's probably, I use bananas just because uh -huh. they're cheaper and they, okay. they are known to release ethylene gas, which is yeah. what the mame needs to ripen up properly. So I did use a banana because I happen to have a plantain. It ripened up so quickly, like it was on the table for days and it wasn't really doing anything. Just one night with that and a paper bag, a banana paper bag inside. Uh, well, this inside a paper bag and it kind of turned into this and I was thinking, oh shoot, I have to film this video in a couple of days. How can I slow down the ripeness? <laughs> well, put it in the fridge. So once you once okay. you get it right to where you want it, you could put it in the fridge to hold the ripeness. And when you put it in the fridge, because it is a tropical fruit, it doesn't like to get too cold. So I wouldn't try to put it in like a, I would probably put it in more like a 40, 40 degree fridge, maybe 45 degrees. Like one of my fridge, I have a fridge set at like around 50, a, a fridge set at 40 and the fridge set for like 30, <laughs> five for different you know uses so i put this in my warmer fridge okay so, so i found the coolest spot in that house because i was afraid of the fridge messing it up which some yeah. tropical fruit it, it, like, it, it could to. happen yes yeah so that's good to know okay so we know this is good um to make the smoothie or the milkshake a lot of places would use like the regular milk and the um uh, condensed milk so we're oh, not wow. gonna yeah so that's like the non-vegan just the standard version yeah. that they would just make yep although now i see that they have like coconut condensed milk now that's oh, wow. more like vegan family so i guess pretty cool uh, but instead of doing that we're going to substitute with a couple of things today john's gonna actually show me how, i'm gonna learn this on the job <laughs> how to open and make coconut milk because i've made coconut milk in the past but it doesn't taste anything as creamy as like the ones I've had when he made them. So he told me that I need to pick, you know, like more specifically, like, you know, what kind of coconut. So I picked out this one and I think John has video on like showing you how to actually make the milk and all that sort of stuff. So I'll point you guys to those videos. We wanted more details and like knowing how to pick coconuts. Yep, my videos on picking um, coconuts and they're one of my favorite foods, actually. Sure. That is for me too. That is why I have to learn it because I gotta be able to eat this when you're not around. So, <laughs> <laughs> which is basically all the time. <laughs> yeah. So okay, we're gonna make the coconut milk and then we're gonna add some extra because I wanna coconut kinda, water. Yeah. Coconut so, water. So it won't be too thick. It won't be like cream. It'll be more like milk. So you need to add more liquid. Yeah, and it's kind of stretch more because I only have one fruit here. Yeah. And kind of want to share it. So. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and then it depends on the sweetness. If it's not sweet enough, uh, you can add, you know, a banana to it, or like maybe dates. Kind of like that caramel, like that date adds like that richer body to it that might replace a little bit of like that condensed milk flavor. I kind of feel like. Yeah, I have might. no idea what condensed milk tastes <laughs> like, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first, let me show you guys how to open the coconuts first. So the first step is to first we want to get the water out of the coconut. Um, the water is not the milk of the coconut. That's the coconut water. Um, you could buy it. Most people buy it in like bottles. We're going to add some coconut water to make the milk. But um, what I'm going to use is a fillet knife. I forget where I got this. Maybe the dollar store or something. It's a serrated. Yeah, yeah. serrated knife. But it's a fillet knife because like the, the edge is like really thin. It comes to a fine point. It's not super fat. This is very critical. Mm. So on the coconut, there's basically two eyes and a mouth. And the mouth is actually where the coconut seed is that'll germinate that'll start to form the sprout. All right, so there's two eyes, and the eyes have the eyebrows. You can see the eyebrow here, and the eyebrow is covered on this one from this stuff. But uh, this is the eyebrow here, and then this is the mouth here. It usually it's a larger hole, and it's a lot softer. And then that's where we're gonna use the fillet knife to kind of go into the mouth. And then we can shove it in there, and then we're just gonna basically go around the whole mouth to make a big hole as wide as possible. And I'm using like literally the end tip of the knife because it's, it comes to a fine point. And I'm trying to expand the hole as much as possible. When you stick the knife in, originally you'll hear like a little pssst, which is a good so sound because that means that like, um, you know, there's no leaks. So you can see we basically pulled out a little plug. And now we have like a nice hole where we can pour out the water. Oh, that's a big hole. Yeah, so we nice. want to make the biggest hole possible. And then I, I put a sieve and we use a sieve to basically catch any kind of debris so it doesn't go into the into the water that we're going to blend. I guess we could have put it directly into the blender there. <laughs> All right. So now, uh, did you want to do the other okay, one? Okay, I'll do the other one. Wendy, do you know which one's the mouth? Uh, oh. <laughs> that one has a smaller mouth. Yeah, I figured this is the mouth then. No. No. This is the eyebrows. You could feel the ridges. Feel oh, the ridges, okay. And you feel okay, this okay. is like more flat. You feel the ridge there, ridge uh, there. Okay, so this one is yeah, the mouth. That one's okay. The mouth. Oh, goodness. So I got to put the mouth. Yeah. 
Go a little deeper. Ooh. Yeah, I heard that sound. That. Yep. Yep. It's a smaller mouth, so it's going to come out a little. Takes a little longer. Yeah, I think I got a good mouth. Okay. All right, let me see if I get the expand okay. it out. <laughs> so, like, I really try, like to try to get in there and. And even scrape with the knife. Ah. Because otherwise it takes forever for this stuff to come out. So you can see I'm like I see. getting some more junk out. But this one's a small mouth, so it's kind of hard. So yeah. That's why I'll sometimes go in an angle and make like a like a cone shape. Mm -hmm. Like so like it's yeah. like bigger at the bottom and then mm -hmm. smaller at the top. Oh. Okay. And then dig out all this little stuff out. Whoa. So you can see it's like nice a lot larger clean. now. Yeah. yeah. And cleaner. And then we can dump that out. Cool. And then even then it'll have like because we don't have an air hole, we have to like maybe shake it sometimes. Yeah. Going pretty fast though. Yeah, the bigger the hole, the easier this comes out. Oh, and that's. Do you know about the little coconut seed? No. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it came out. Wow. So that little thing, you see the difference? That's like white meat, but then this is like a little white piece. Like that's the part that germinates actually into the sprout, this piece. And then I want you to eat that so you could kind of taste what it. Mm. It tastes like it tastes a little bit different than coconut oh, meat. Oh, it already feels different. Yeah, it, it is different. It's like some kind of I don't know I don't know the technical term. Mm -hmm. Oh. They see how that tastes oh. different than meat. It's like really soft and, and like sweet and sweet. Yeah, and you wow. can try to taste some of the meat to taste the difference. It's like more crunchy. It's soft. I kind of like popped in your mouth. Yeah, kind of like exactly. a like a a sprouted bean. Yeah, I mean that mm. germinates. So that's, that's oh, what happens. I just ate life. You just ate life. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and pour the water into the blender and see how much water we got. And generally I like to do like a minimum one coconut to 32 ounces of water. Um, and so today we have about 20 ounces. So we're gonna put a little more of this stuff in there. This is just Taste Nirvana, real coconut water. Ugh. We're gonna put two or one in? Two, right? Yeah, probably All two, because right. we're up to like 30 now, and then we'll, this will take us to 38, and then we'll add two coconut meats. That should be pretty good. Mm. And this has additional coconut pulp in it, so. Take the lid. Mm -hmm. So the next step is we need to get the coconut meat out of the coconut. The water was the easy part, the getting the meat out is a little more difficult. Um, no, so don't do that yet. what we're gonna need is you're just, I like to use a big meat cleaver, right? So we're gonna throw this up in the air and have it come down <laughs> and crack and right in half. No, perfectly, <laughs> just kidding. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this. And if you look at the coconut, like oh, the, the little stem thing. on the bottom is like the north, the south pole, and this is the north pole where the eyes are. So we wanna go around the equator. So imagine an equator around the coconut. And we're gonna go ahead and, and tap. I use a sharp end. You could use a dull end, but I use a sharp end. Oh, you but if you do that, you gotta be careful because if this sharp end comes off, then it could hit you. So then you might want to use a dull end. Either side works. The sharp end, the sharp end maybe works a bit better because it kind of fractures it better. Anyways, you want to just go around the um, equator, tap it, and turn it. Try to do it in the same plane. It might have to look away because <laughs> the dust things won't yep. come off and get you. I'm not having to do it hard. I'm just tapping it really lightly. Yep. You can hear that crack. And then you hear oh. it crack. Yep. Oh. And then you hear it just totally opens up. And we almost got two exact even halves, wow. not exactly yeah. even. But this is nice That's thick really meat. That's really nice. This is really nice thick meat for making uh, the milk today. I like the white coconuts a bit better than the browns because there's a little bit more, I would say, creamy versus oily. Because as the meat gets more mature, it gets more fatty and not quite as creamy. Whereas like a young jelly meat is more, you yeah. know, jelly kind of like, almost, like not quite creamy. Yeah. So did you want to try to crack crack yeah. this or should I do oh, it? I can do it. Okay, I know how to do this part. I think it's hard for me to open a young coconut with the, I've seen you using like the, yeah, the, the chef's knife and you did that there. thing. Yeah, yeah. that's oh, scary for me. I, I can do this, this is, but I, I do side this too. side. That's The other side's too scary for me. Row, row tap and turn, tap, turn, tap, turn. <laughs> oh, there we go already. Keep turning. I was afraid my coordination isn't very good. You can put this in glasses. <laughs> yeah, wear well, your safety goggles <laughs> when Wendy's doing it. <laughs> Yours flew too. I have big chunks. <laughs> All 
All right, it's not a, bad. Wow, this one's a little older, right? Yeah, a little bit more mature, not mm -hmm. bad. All right, so next step, once you get them in half, good job, Wendy. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and use our special coconut tool. Yeah. <laughs> so this is especially raked for just such a purpose of uh, getting into the coconut right around the shell to get the meat out. Um, I've also heard that if you put this in the oven and you're not adverse to like heating your coconut, if you put this in the oven, you know, at a little bit warm degrees for a little bit, it'll like heat up and then separate automatically if you don't have this tool. Mm. Um, I would caution against using any kind of other knife to get in there because man, that could be that kind of dangerous. Right tool for the right job. These are about like, I think $20 on Amazon. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this tool and I like to go where like, like this is perfect to kind of get the entrance a little bit and you're gonna kind of weasel it in there. So I'm not just pushing it straight, yeah. I'm kind of like weaseling it and mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, um, twisting my, my hand as I'm like turning it around. So I'm turning it around. I'm moving the coconut with my hand around. Oh, wow. and look at that, that came out so easy. That's, that's so a really easy. nice That's piece. an so easier, this is an easy older. One. Well, this, this coconut came out easy because it's not, it's not stuck, stuck, so why don't you yeah. try that one, Wendy? That one would be harder. That one's probably gonna be a bit harder because <laughs> that's kind of easy. But make, watch out that that doesn't come out and then and then get you because it. Can oh cut you. yeah. So I would try to like do it. How would I do that? I'd probably like. Uh, I'd probably like. That part looks like a little. Yeah. Well, you can get an entry here. There. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I. So you want to really get this in between. And I try to shove it in a little bit. Mm. Once you shove it in, I always then try to keep wiggle. the knife, the coconut tool parallel to the table and then move your oh. hand to, to, to move the coconut around, not moving the knife. I find oh. that a little bit safer. Okay. So why don't we take that back out and you can do, do it. Do it all by myself. Okay. All by yourself. <laughs> Jam it in. <laughs> Is that the part I put it in? It was already pretty easy. <laughs> wow. Weak. I guess I'm strong or something. I guess oh, I'm go. just not that strong. <laughs> well, you've never done this before, too. I've done I, I have, but I suck at it. I can't. Oh. It's always like breaking in pieces that come out oh, for I me. See. Yeah, I don't have the technique. I have the tool. I just don't do it right. Okay, so parallel. Oh, so you already do this. Yeah, I'm just not good at it. It's I would pain. probably wiggle it to get it in deeper because you're oh. too shallow. And and then the other thing is you have to like pay attention to the curve of the tool and the curve of the coconut. Yeah, So okay. sometimes like you might have to like lip press down on the coconut tool to, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to try to feel where it's at. I don't know, at, should I do I, it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll make yeah. it look easy. I know. <laughs> this is painful for me to watch, <laughs> struggle. This is my life. <laughs> You're I, struggling I, in life. Yeah. Practice makes perfect. Should I, do you want to observe while I do it? Okay. It, yeah, it really seems like, okay, that's what he's doing. You know, I'm doing that, but not really. I don't really. know if I get, I mean, I just do it. I don't, I, okay, so I'm taking the coconut knife. I'm sticking it in there. I'm holding this firmly. I have my finger on this side and I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving my hand down. So I'm trying to rotate the coconut around as I'm moving this. And look at I mean, I'm just, I'm just turning this as I'm turning pushing the coconut knife in and turning it. And now I'm pushing the coconut knife even further as I run it around. All right, we're trying to, this is the coconut, it's a funny shape, so I can't get underneath it all the way. So I'm gonna move the mm -hmm. coconut knife over. And then this is, if you crack it, then you gotta really be careful because now this could come out and get you. Oh, yeah. there we go. Wow. Perfects yours. Right, so maybe I better do the last two because <laughs> otherwise we might, the video will be another hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to hold this like just in the same place. Yeah, like locking. And I'm trying to just move the coconut around it. See? So mo and I'm, I'm maybe moving the knife back and forth, the coconut knife a little bit, but I'm mostly moving the coconut. Yeah, I want to say like, well, that's what I was doing too. <laughs> it just didn't work. All right, fine, you could do it in the last one. I mean, obviously that's not what I was doing, but it, I thought I was, but you know. <laughs> Parallel, right? You see, you're at a bigger oh. bigger angle. Maybe oh. that table is too high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the coconut shell is so brittle, I, it comes through, Ow. and I've like, I think cut myself maybe once. Out of probably like sometimes hundreds I've had of some times. Sometimes I've had some close calls where I luckily didn't cut myself. Yeah. But they used to have a better tool. This is the knockoff tool from China. The real tool is from like Indonesia with a wooden handle. 
and the stupid guy that like he basically is like I invented this tool and like BS dude you like saw the tool from Indonesia you copied it made it knocked off in China then you made the side sharp so now it's more dangerous so you could cut people uh. and now you said you invented it <laughs> which I think was personally lame because I have the original tool from Indonesia originally mm, so which is a, a much better tool but it's not that? stainless steel oh so you have to clean and dry it right away yeah you you clean and dry it right away it had a wood handle and it's just this is like mm. the cheap Chinese version the other one actually has had a better like rake on the tool yeah. itself too mm. not quite as aggressive and it didn't have a sharp blade <laughs> it's not going anywhere <laughs> Want me to do it? All right. Oh my God. All right, one piece. Mm. Yes, All we're right. done. So okay. why don't you cut these up into smaller pieces? Okay, I so, can do that. To, um, be like, I don't know, six or something. I could use it, sometimes I'll just break them up into smaller pieces, but you could cut them up. It just makes it easier for the blender to work. In Vietnam, some places would actually roast the entire coconut for you to like drink and roast give... it. Yeah. <laughs> like just you can't... put this on the grill and roast I it. I think so because it, yeah, and then it just has like a more nutty flavor. Oh, that's weird. I never see. Yeah. yeah I guess it's kind of like toasting it. Yeah. Drink, eat toasted coconut. Maybe I know. meant toasted, but yeah. So I did try to like lightly toast the meat. It's really good. <laughs> I never tried that. Uh, of course you wouldn't. <laughs> It kind of lifts that, yeah. I'm and sure. Then, no, like, I'm the sure oils, it right? So yeah, the oils yep. are coming out more. So that's the other thing. If you want a really um, more creamy milk, you would actually want to, you know, do this in hot, hotter weather because you know coconut oil will get solid, uh -huh. like in your house yeah. in the winter. In the summertime, in my house, anyways, it's liquid. Yeah. So if it's above 80 degrees, then the coconut oils will come out a bit better. So you could preheat your coconuts, like you know, in an oven, for example. Mm. Not too hot, but just a little bit hotter. So then you'll get a richer, you know, uh, coconut milk. I've noticed if I make it in the summertime outside oh, versus okay. like the winter time when it's cold. Mm. It gets, and then actually that was also a tip from one of my viewers. Ah. Like, you know what? That's a really good tip. That's Thank a you. really great tip. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to put this on and now we're going to blend up the water and the meat. But we have a special vacuum blender that sucks out the extra oxygen out of the container. So we won't oxidize the fats in there. It also keep a better texture. So better uh, texture, better color. Better texture, better color, better flavor, less dissolved air in the mixture. So we're gonna go ahead and first uh, pump, put this pump on, which is now sucking all the extra oxygen out. If you might look, you can might see some bubbles, um, you know, coming up out of the bottom where all the trapped air is coming up, or we might not. I don't know. And then you can see on here, like the lights light up from red to orange to green to tell you that you, you're at a pretty good vacuum. But if you want to know better, you could pinch it. And if you hear the pump tone change, it could still suck more oh, vacuum. Oh, okay. So we're going to let this go a little bit longer. Nice. All right, so once we've pulled a lot of vacuum, then we're just going to go ahead and put this on. Um, and we'll just ramp it up to high speed. Oh, that sucks, man. All right, so once we got all the oxygen pumped out, we're gonna go ahead and hit the button again to make sure this is still pumping out oxygen. And we're gonna go ahead and then just ramp this up to high speed. All right. Ah, uh, see, that's still... Oh, one of too many, too much This is me. like, this is so thick because we put two coconuts in there, so the blender is having a hard time with it. So that's why I think I usually only use one coconut. Ah. Uh. But I can get my commercial machine that will not do this. <laughs> out of my budget. So that Dang, that's cool. It makes it a lot quieter too huh? with yeah. this yeah, cover. Because now this, this goes down and then this, this goes on top. So that's cool. Mm. So you don't have a separate stupid piece. Okay, so we've been changing out different blenders because we thought that there was an issue with it, but it was actually because the pieces of coconut meat was too big. Yeah, it's too big and it puts too much strain on the motor because all those those machines that we were using were like the low-end household, then we used the, the high-end household, and this is basically their most expensive blender that Blendtec sells. This is actually a DC-powered motor that does not basically get, does not lose speed when getting like under, under, under load. And that's why this is the one I use in my daily <laughs> life. I didn't think we would have to get this baby out this guy will run you in excess of $2,000 and it is so good. I'll actually have my own signature brand 
blender with my name on it with the vacuum yeah. system because this is the blender that I've been looking for my whole life. Wow. It is the, it is the solution to all your thick blending needs, but you, it will set you back. And here's the thing, most people will not need to buy this expensive blender for most things. But then again, how many people make coconut milk at home? Yeah, exactly. And the other so, thing is, if you want to avoid this and use the household one, then what you would do is you would you would basically um, use one coconut instead of two. Yeah. She wanted it thick. The other thing you would do is you'd want to chop the piece up into smaller pieces and then also add more liquid. So we have, because we have so much like yeah. meat compared to the water, you know, maybe one coconut meat to 32 ounces of water. We're doing like two meats to 32 ounces of water, right? Yep. Or 38 ounces. Yeah. So we really want to try to like add more water, <laughs> yeah. take out some meat, or you could blend half of it That's at a time. That's what I do at home. So you I, could like put half yeah. a coconut and half as much water, still the same amount yep. of water, so that it's not as much load on the blender. Or the other thing is, if you have a really cheap household blender, you could just use your household blender, put all the water in and put in a chunk of meat, let it blend, put in another chunk of meat, let it blend. Yep. Don't put all the meat in at once like we did. Put a, one yeah. piece, let it blend up pretty good first and then add another one, add another one, add another yep. one. Yep. Yeah, that's gonna say, all right, so we're gonna keep the vacuum running. So we're pumping out the extra oxygen as we're blending. Mm -hmm. Turn this on and hit it to six. And look at this thing, crank uh, through it. It's not stopping. Well, we might over temp though, but it'll shut down for like 30 seconds and then it'll come back on. It just needs to like cool down. It just needs to cool down. It has a fan that comes on. This thing is the bomb. Wow. Look at this, not stopping. Those other- And it's so much quieter. Yeah, it has a sound the enclosure. Sound I mean, this room. is the, once it, for those of you guys that like have some money to spend on good equipment, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Best blender that I've ever used in my entire life. I've blown out other thousand dollar blenders, but this one, I haven't been able to stop yet. Oh my God, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's the coolest. What a difference. Look at that. It's just, and it's not loading like the other one, like you could hear it go and then it kind of slow down. Yeah. It this doesn't... is just, you hear the constant RPM because yeah. it's just freaking piling through the stuff until it's shut down. Wow. And we'll yeah. run it one more time to make sure we get really a good extraction of the fats because that's what we're doing. We're chopping up the fibers to release the fats, the saturated, the, the healthy saturated fats from coconut, medium chain fatty acids, and all the different nutrients in the coconut. Get it into the liquid and then we're gonna basically extract the liquid using a juicer in the next step. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Yeah, this is the thickest coconut milk you've ever tasted. And you know what? Yeah, like I forgot to mention earlier that people, if you don't want to do all this work, you can pick you up your it. own. Yeah. <laughs> if you get your coconut milk though, after you made your own, you'll never want to get any nut milks at the store. I mean, yeah. besides just not being fresh, there's additives. Didn't shut down once. We did two 50 second cycles. Shut that off. Pull out the vacuum. Pop this up. Ooh. Look Whoa, at that, man. That's like so, so creamy. Oh and my gosh. Thick and creamy. This thing is the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and flew a little flower petal in. Wow, look at that, so rich. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next step is we're gonna go ahead and make a milk out of the blended coconut, water, and meat. You could put it through a nut milk bag, but I don't like my hands dirty unless I have to. So the juicer really makes it easy. This is the Omega VSJ843. This is the best juicer I found to extract nut milk because basically it'll do it for you. You don't have to. So you're just going to go ahead and pour in a little bit of the mixture at a time. You're going to fill up the chute until it comes up to the top and then you're going to let the machine work and it's going to basically just uh, separate out the pulp so the milk is coming out and that's pretty thick milk that's and hopefully really some of the pulp will start to uh, come out as well. Wow, look how thick that is. Wow. It's gonna be so good. <laughs> oh, there it comes. And now I'm gonna go ahead 
And go oh, ahead and pour the milk so through. thick. Look at that. The sieve one oh more time to make God. sure we have no particulate right, in there because I'm, I'm anal about these things. <laughs> Wendy probably wouldn't care. <laughs> yeah, I was going to blend. <laughs> it's going to be so silky smooth. So rich. Right, so we got a little bit of particulate in there. Mm -hmm. mm. Not much. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, Wendy, try the fresh coconut milk that you never had before out of the <laughs> out of the coconut. This is legit. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, smells so good. Is it good? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so creamy. It's almost like. Is this like what you wanted? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we just had to use three different blenders to get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, oh, it's so sweet and it leaves that thick creaminess. Oh my gosh. I would sieve it out. There's a little bit more particulate than I'd like, but you're probably good with it. I like it. I can chew a little. It's yeah, this is really oh. thick, man. <laughs> if you ain't drank the whole thing, you'd be like, oh, uh, it's like so it's fatty really, and rich. It is. It's, it's really so rich. filling. Some people like have a hard time digesting when you have too much of the coconut fat. Yeah, wow. This mm. is probably one of the riches I've made. Yes. Because once again, <laughs> only use one coconut and 32 ounces of water. Don't use two, otherwise you got to get an expensive blender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but take the time and stretch it out. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Mmm, this would be really good ice cream too, this thickness, this <laughs> creamy. Should we cut the fruit? Yeah, you're going to use them, cut them in mayo? Yeah, okay. We are going to cut it in half. See what it looks like on the inside. Ready? And then there's like a really beautiful seed inside. I try to not score too hard so I don't damage the seed. Wow, look at that. Oh, wow, it looks that? good. No mold. Yeah, no mold. That's a good Thank goodness. Sign. And really beautiful, like peachy color. Yeah. Wow. Look how cool this is. Okay, so. You should probably get a spoon, eh? Yeah. Like sometimes like this part veiny. is not as sweet. Okay. And it's like hard. So yeah. I was kind of hard. In. Okay. And then yeah, when the seed comes that out, out, like this, it's like a little the stem extension. So like the extension of the seed. Mm. Sometimes this is good, and then I don't know. You just you got to play and see which one doesn't come out easily. Yeah, and then we'll skip that part. Like you just yeah, want the really exactly. soft. I mean, you part. can still eat it, but yeah, that one might be all right. Yeah, this is all all right. I think, I think that's all right. Yeah, just not the center yeah. top. But like, this is like a pie. Yeah, it reminds me of eating pumpkin pie. Yeah. Oh so my rich, gosh, rich you can make a pumpkin protein. pie like filling with this, right? Like a. I mean, I just, I just like to eat it plain self. and not even turn it into a smoothie or anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like a pudding. <laughs> I'm wasting it when I'm making a smoothie uh, out of it. Well, it tastes like a different flavor to me. Like they're good both ways, but this just brings back childhood memories. <laughs> yeah, this is a good, good ripeness. Yeah. And then like, if you like, you can spice it up with a little bit of cinnamon or mm. whatever you like to. Do you want a piece? Sure. <laughs> Mm. That's pretty solid. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. This is better than the previous one I had. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's not overly ripe because they get peak ripe good and then they start to yeah. kind of go negative. It's kind of hard for me to describe the taste of this fruit. Like, 
Because it reminds me of pumpkin pie. Oh, yeah. Plus right. also some other mild. unique flavor. Like, mm -hmm. tastes like my mesa pote. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, what's it taste like? You just got to try it. Yeah, it's pretty close to pumpkin pie, but with a little slight different flavor. And like the, the sweetness is different. It's not like yeah. other fruit. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. Date, what do you think? All right, yeah, sure. I mean, not a, there's not that much. More dates make it better. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just put like. Make sure there's no. Yeah, nope. Yeah. Or little stem thing. Yeah, that thing is going to be a pain. They should be pitted though. But yeah, they are pitted actually. Know. Oh, it's good to check. Yeah, I mean, the, the milk is pretty sweet, yeah, and the that's fruit is pretty sweet, Yeah, the date would just put over the top. Yeah, so I think three is enough. I just wanted the flavor of the date, so... I see. Okay, we're good. All right. All right, vacuum blender for better flavor, less bloating, and gas. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's a good thing. And better colors for Instagram pictures. Oh yeah. All right, let's hit it. We're all finished. Let's see what we got. Mm. Oh my <gasps> gosh, this oh, is it's so, so big. cute. <laughs> Oh, it's almost too thick, huh? It's almost too thick. Almost like you need a spoon. Look at how thick that Whoa. is. That's insane. Whoa. It is a shake. This is a shake. I mean, that's truly a shake. This is truly a shake. <laughs> I still want it in there. You want to pour it in there? Do you think it's a good idea? It won't come out that easily. Yeah, it's I mean, all right. It's not going to come out of the cup either, either but... Uh. All right. After three hours of work, <laughs> <laughs> your help. <laughs> Cheers. From scratch. Mm -hmm. That's insane. <laughs> it's too rich. It's just all really rich on top, but mm. it's so Whoa. fatty. Oh my god, that's really good. <laughs> you know what? This is actually this would turn into ice cream like yeah. perfectly because it's so it's oh, already rich. Yeah. Oh, instant ice cream with your ice cream maker, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Mmm. I'll probably just do two dates, you know? Mm. But, like... I'd do one coconut meat. Mmm, This is too pretty much. fatty, yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's so sweet and, like... It is, like, that caramelly kind of, like... Yeah, a, right? no, I mean, it's really good. Yeah. I wouldn't normally make stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Oh, well, I don't really get this fruit that often. It takes too long. <laughs> but I do <laughs> have coconut totally milk in my fridge ready to go to make recipes like this if well, I want. Well, that really helps when yeah. you prep. Yeah, when you have stuff I pre prep ready. in advance, yeah. then I vacuum seal it. Make I'll a save. batch. Yeah, make a batch. How long can those like coconut milk like this sit for? The fun thing is if, I, if they sit in my fridge too long, they'll actually turn into yogurt. <laughs> oh, great. So then I got yogurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That works. And then I feed it to my dog to see if he eats it because he has a better sniffer than I do. He gets some more mold and stuff. Yeah. If he eats it, I'm like, all right, it's safe to eat, then I'll eat it. <laughs> mm. Thank you, John, for making this possible. You know, the Blendtec. And thanks, Blendtec. High end commercial DC mm. powered motor literally made it possible because the, <laughs> the other blenders didn't work. <laughs> I know, what a difference. It would have slowed the process down if you have to use like the regular blenders. That's what I just, yeah. having the wrong tools or not the right tools frustrates me. And this is why, I mean, this is why I have an Instagram post. This is the best blender I've ever used because it could handle hard things that would shut down a Vitamix. It would over temp, yeah. you'd have to put it in your freezer and then use, you know, come back when it cooled down in an yeah. hour. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, not much people would want to make a shake like this. Yeah, I mean, often enough. To, yeah, yeah, I mean, but I make but it's thick really things cool. all the time. Oh like, yeah, like prepping your dinners and prepping stuff. Prepping my dinners, yeah. yeah, like every day, <laughs> pushing my blender to the max. That's true. Plus, this is quiet and yeah, automatic, and I just love it. It's, it's amazing. really cool. All right. Yeah, so cool. good. You guys have got to try this, or you can always substitute with some other, you know, of your favorite fruits. Mm -hmm. I think jackfruits make really good smoothies too. That's a little more yeah, easy to get. Oh my gosh, yes, durian. It's over the top with durian. Oh, super creamy. 
and that sweetness and that durian flavor. Yeah. Yeah, durian if would you be like really durian. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you like custard apple. Yeah. But that's like a little seed. It's a little harder to make a smoothie with. You have to like take out take all out the seeds. Take out the seeds, yeah. yeah. It's a little, uh, longer But process. I think jackfruit durian would be a good Durian's options. easy because the seeds are big. Yeah. Yep. Mm. And it's kind of a more fatty fruit itself, yeah. you know, and rich. Yeah. Or if you like mangoes, not so rich, but I think a little bit of tartness with mango might still be good too. It would be kind of like that mango lassi, like the Indian smoothie oh, right. shake thing. Yeah, I mean... Or Especially you just, if you're a coconut got fermented you know that would i mean be i would just basically that. put coke i would put um coke. <laughs> I'd, put coke. <laughs> I'd put carrot juice in this to blend it up with the milk and then put mm. some curry powder oh. with the dates and that would oh, be like the perfect, perfect curry. base curry soup because I, I mean that's so oh creamy God. that yeah. milk we made yeah that's like the perfect soup right there oh my gosh yeah thank you you guys for sticking around to see how this was made from scratch <laughs> but this will be edited who does down. that nobody does that anymore. We <laughs> if you want stuff in a can but you will never want another drink again after you had your you own won't. like you know, I mean, this quality yeah that's why i make all my own stuff and i mean that's why my job is making food <laughs> for me first before my real job because you got to take care of you first before anybody else because even if you work your job and you know buy pre-made food you're never going to get this same quality with a perfectly ripened mesa pote and you know homemade coconut milk it's not gonna happen yeah and we did get very lucky today with all the ingredients being good because sometimes you, you know you well can't. you picked out excellent coconuts and you got a good <laughs> mommy that was a little yeah. bit lucky but it worked out <laughs> <laughs> and ripening it you ripened it pretty yeah perfectly, we did the video on the right day and all that so <laughs> i'm very glad i'm so thankful for that and that is it for today you guys if you enjoyed this video be sure to give me a thumbs up and um subscribe and like the video also hit that bell button because sometimes you don't get notifications when new videos are out be sure to go check out john's channel he's got three channels one growing your greens um okay raw i mean yeah okay, okay raw. raw which he has a lot of like awesome recipes for like That's raw about the coconut videos on oh yeah so like coconuts and all that good stuff that's important video be sure to check that out before <laughs> you make your own coconut milk and discount juicers where you can find all those juicers and appliances you know have the blend tech vacuum blenders coming up soon on that channel well depending on when you watch this <laughs> <laughs> it'll be out soon trust me <laughs> okay guys thank you so much i will leave the links of um how you can connect with john and myself and along with my website everything we've mentioned in this video will be linked down below Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Cheers! Yeah!